what began 13 years ago is finally coming to an end. The invincible veteran mercenary Barney Ross and his entourage will return in The Expendables 4, the last installment of the Ensemble action thriller franchise. The Expendables first kicked off in 2010 as a trip down memory lane to the 80s and 90s action movie Golden Age, introducing Barney Ross, Lee Christmas, Gunnar Jensen, and Toll Road, among others, as a group of elite mercenaries who undertake all kinds of assignments and missions from government agencies around the world. Each of the first three installments in the series features a new mission, carried out by a different set of mercenaries, but all read by Ross, Christmas, Gunner, and Road. But this time, Lee Christmas is set to be the focus. 50 Cent, Megan Fox, and Tony Jaw will join the cast as well. And apparently, the movie has a built-in revival gimmick to make up for the disastrous Expendables 3 installment, which marked a commercial low point for the series and turned the most devoted segments of its audience off with its PG-13 rating while failing to pull in younger viewers. Stallone himself has called the rating a horrible miscalculation, so it's doubtful that The Expendables 4 will be rated anything but R. With that being said, let's take a look at all the other things horribly wrong with The Expendables. Blatant False Advertisement Rather than The Expendables, the movie could have just been called Stallone and Statham doing things, since the other Expendables just pop up at the beginning and near the end. And besides Stallone, Statham, and Lee, others who people actually care about are more or less useless cameos. So if you expect all these men in a movie, like way too many ads imply, then don't get your hopes up. It's all just a cheap marketing gimmick. The movie is not sure about what it is, and the plot really doesn't matter? The Expendables is definitely modeled after those great 80s movies, but it can't decide if it is a tribute to those movies or if it's a movie of today, with an intention as if it were planned and produced back then. What is the beauty of Commando? It gets to the point as fast as possible. Five minutes is dedicated to show the bad guys. Six minutes to show Schwarzenegger, 12 minutes into the movie and he gets attacked. Say the line, Bart! I'll be right back. Yay! 17 minutes and we know the plot. They have his daughter and he needs to work for them. 20 minutes, we find ourselves sitting with Arnold on the plane, guarded by a bad guy. And we know that if their boss finds out that Arnold is not cooperating, they will kill his daughter. And after 24 minutes, Arnold kills the bodyguard and escapes the plane. Get to the chopper! That sums up the main point of the story. We have a goal for the protagonist, save the daughter. We have a villain for the final fight, former friend of hero. We have an impossible task that only Schwarzenegger can fulfill. Kill all people to get to his daughter. Let off some steam, Bennett. And we have a time window to increase tension. If he can't make it before the plane lands, then we'll find out he killed the bodyguard and will execute his daughter. The great thing is the simplicity. After 25 minutes, there's just action after action, some side plot to get to the girl in the end. Are you gonna tell me what's going on or what? No. But the primary target never changes, nor do morals or motivations. Everything is laid out and we enjoy the slaughter. Expendables, on the other hand, decides to waste the time with exposition nobody needs. The epic mission they have to make really takes off about 30 minutes towards the end of the movie. Before that, there is an on and off. They get a job, they hang around, they find a girl, and then they leave again. Great job. That was a statement. And we can have a not even remotely satisfying shootout. The movie spends more time with what no one cares about, and removing entire segments of the movie won't hurt the actual story. It's not very strong plot-wise, and that might have to do with working with a large cast. You can't possibly incorporate a great deal of characterization and backstories when you're trying to move a plot forward, especially an action one. But in the grand scheme of things that can be overlooked, we're not watching these movies to experience Shakespeare. For example, in Expendables 1, 
there is a subplot about Dolph Lundgren, where Stallone and Lundgren quarrel over their modus operandi, which leads to Lundgren leaving the team and becoming the inevitable traitor. But instead of making good use of that fact, the traitor storyline is not affecting the main story at all and is killed off before the final mission starts. And then they brought him back, somehow? But the worst offender is Statham's story about his ex or not girlfriend, which is more or less pointless. Stereotypes When it comes to action movies, stereotypes are the best thing you can fall back to get the story going as fast as possible. Since we have seen how well drama works for a movie like The Expendables, you can just use stereotypes to get the same job done in half the time. They are easily understandable and get the point across. Let a guy in a suit smoke a cigar? He's greedy and evil. Have someone betray a friend? He's definitely evil. Kill the wife of the hero? Motivation? I'll be back. You've been back enough. I'll be back. Again, Commando is a good example of fast stereotypes because the movie is aware that it's just a fun ride. We have a traitor, which gets our hatred pumped up, so that we root for Arnold and we have his daughter. Saving your abducted daughter from criminals needs no justification. Everyone understands why the hero would do it, and it saves us from a terrible monologue by Rourke. The Expendables 3 is easily the weak link in the series chain. After flip-flopping on a decision to maintain an R rating or lightening the rating to a PG-13, producers whiffed badly. Violence was reduced, more jokes were peppered in, and the overall tone of the film was more lighthearted compared to the first two. Not what you should be going for when you feature this much action movie talent. While the movie did manage to squeeze in a few more legends, some casting choices left the core audience scratching their collective heads. Ronda Rousey, Kellen Lutz, and Kelsey Grammer all have no business being in this movie. And this time, all we know by the trailer is, we'll be seeing 50 Cent, Megan Fox, and Tony Jaa. While fans of the series are surely eager to see it finally return, there's the fact that it'll be coming off the disappointing performance of The Expendables 3. The movie looks set to deliver a thrilling cinematic experience. But then again, Expendables 4 might turn out to be a Christmas movie, and then there are the rumors that it might even be a female-led spin-off. What do you think? Comment down in the section below and don't forget to like and subscribe.